My name is Winna Morin and I live in the Tampa Bay area in Florida. Um, I became involved in the fight against uh, targeting our children with the flavored vapes. Uh, a few years ago, our son was lured and targeted by flavored tobacco vapes and subsequently had severe health issues after. So I reached out to PAVE and they were really my rock. And I am so honored to be able to introduce Representative Wasserman Schultz um, as a mother and a breast cancer survivor. Your efforts mean so much to so many families. Um, thank you for your help with passing the menthol tobacco rule with the FDA. Um, thank you for your leadership and advocating for our children. Um, I applaud your efforts so much and it's my absolute honor to, rep to introduce Representative Wasserman Schultz. Hello, I'm Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and I'm so grateful to take part in this year's Clear the Vapor Conference. Thank you to Parents Against Vaping E-Cigarettes for inviting me, and to Meredith Berman, Dorian Furman, and Shelley Bressler for being such incredible leaders and allies in our fight against youth e-cigarette usage and big tobacco. We're all here today to address the very disturbing trend for parents like me, the spike in vaping among children and young adults. Recent FDA and CDC studies indicate that two and a half million middle and high school students use e-cigarettes. The biggest draw for young adults is flavors, with 43% of e-cigarette users in middle and high schools reporting that they were drawn to them, and roughly 85% report seeking out and only using flavored e-cigarettes. This is not a huge surprise, but it is unacceptable. We clearly still have a serious youth tobacco addiction problem. Knowing the dangers of tobacco and e-cigarettes and hearing these statistics drives me to act. And I want you to know that your mission to prevent the health risks from tobacco use, especially e-cigarettes, is my mission. And here's just some of what I'm doing about it. First, I've repeatedly urged the FDA to finish reviewing all the pre-market tobacco applications for e-cigarettes and use all its powers to remove all un unauthorized products from the market until it does complete its reviews. This is the best way forward because these products are on the market illegally right now. But removing access to these products is not enough. We must ensure that children never pick up a vape in the first place. Second, in the House, I've led the Preventing Opportunities for Teen E-Cigarette and Tobacco Addiction Act, or the PROTECT Act, which I plan to reintroduce this month. This legislation takes three critical steps to address the youth vaping epidemic. It directs the CDC to implement a national education campaign for children, young adults, parents, and health professionals on the dangers of tobacco products, including e-cigarettes. It invests in research to develop and improve tobacco cessation programs, including flavored and menthol products, and of course, e-cigarettes for youth. And it also provides funding for the prevention of nicotine addiction, rather than just waiting for children to become addicted. These provisions build on past successful anti-smoking campaigns, those proven strategies that helped drastically lower the rate of cigarette use among young people. I look forward to making this legislation a reality. Third, I have and will continue to lead and prioritize funding for the CDC's Office of Smoking and Health. This funding supports vital programs to combat youth tobacco use. With this funding, CDC and states can more robustly respond to this public health threat, enhance efforts to reduce tobacco use among disparate populations and places where tobacco use rates are high and expand education efforts with youth influencers. Unfortunately, rather than provide an increase in funding this fiscal year, Republicans eliminated all funding for the program. Rest assured, I'll do all I can to make sure this program remains funded and continues to address growing youth e-cigarette use. Fourth, I push the FDA to address the market flood of non-tobacco or synthetic nicotine products. Inadequate enforcement has made these widely available and again, they appeal to our youth. Finally, in the annual appropriations bills, I included language urging the FDA to finalize its rules on menthol and flavors in e-cigarettes and fought back against Republican policies to sabotage or delay these rules. Despite these attacks, the FDA recently announced that its rules banning the sale of menthol cigarettes and flavored cigars are moving forward for final review. These rules will have a profound life-saving benefit to our nation's health, protecting kids and reducing health disparities. This is yet another clear demonstration that we have a strong champion against e-cigarettes in the White House. The Biden administration and the FDA are again standing up to the tobacco industry through these policies, making these actions a critical component of the White House Cancer Moonshot Initiative. Through education, resources, and guidance, we must ensure our children never pick up a vape in the first place. Ultimately, our children's health cannot be ignored or bought off. 
We must fight relentlessly to ban flavored tobacco products and deploy effective campaigns that prevent kids from ever getting addicted to nicotine in the first place. Thank you all so much for joining in this fight. I am with you.